Hello everybody and welcome. Today I'm going to guide you through the configuration of Nextcloud in AWS with EFS, Elastic Cache and Aurora. The first step is to create your storage. I'm using here the default settings for EFS because this is a very simple setup, it's not production, it's just a proof of concept. So no backup, no encryption and not much care given to the security control. So keep that in mind, yeah. So we go to the initial options and just disable whatever you do need for the test or if you're using this in production, do as you should. He already created a security group for um, EFS and I'm gonna use that. You're not using any extra policies and once you go through all the settings and confirm it's good, click on create file system. I had to try Redis a few times before finding a configuration that works. Basically, Nextcloud is not ready to operate on a full multi-master cluster, so we're not going to use cluster mode. Uh, if you try that, you're going to see on Nextcloud logs that it gets lost when the cluster uh, master read, uh, master head replies with uh, the command to tell Nextcloud to retrieve data from a specific server, the application doesn't know how to deal with it. I'm using here the smallest instance type and two replicas, multi-AZ is fine, but not a real cluster, keep that in mind, yes, so not a sort of a multi-master cluster. I already have a security group ready and everything else is fine. To save money, I'm disabling backups, but if you're going to use it in production, you will want it. You also want to tag it. While it creates, then we can go and prepare our database. To begin with, we cr click Create Database. Let's pick Aurora and let's go for serverless, fully managed mode, yeah? You have to choose MySQL compatibility because that's what Nextcloud uses. I'll mark serverless for serverless. Give a name to your cluster. I'm gonna call it NCDB cluster. Master username as admin is okay. And let's write this information in a text file just to make our life easier in the future. If we're going full AWS, of course, you would use the credentials manager and probably use some cloud formation templates. Yeah, you would not do this manually. But for me, at least, it's very important to do things manually one or two times just to be able to understand what's going on. Yeah. So write down the master password, username for easy reference. Let's paste here the password we generated. Pick the smallest possible instance because we really don't need anything else for this it's a single user test. Also for this test, I will comp pause compute capacity, it saves money. Yeah? So if there is no request in the database, the VM running it will be automatically decommissioned by Amazon. Right? We already have a security group for that, that I created previously, I'm going to use it. Uh, what else? I can already create an initial database and ask Nextcloud to use it. And that is good. If you are using a database cluster for a single database, uh, that's a good way to go, yeah. And you don't want to mix that in AWS. Since you can have separate resources, there is no reason, right? I don't want delicious protection because it's going to disappear in a day. Uh, character names, kind of painful change the dash with an underscore, update our text file. Click create database. And our 
cluster is probably being built. In the meantime, let's check Elastic Cache and it should be already done. Oh, not yet. Meanwhile, we can create our EC2 instance and start installing the web server and well, that's all we need basically in PHP. We do create instance or rather launch instance. I'm gonna choose that in because that's what I'm familiar with but you can basically pick whatever you prefer and adapt the instructions. I'm not gonna be yet placing them behind uh, auto scaling group so it's enough to use the default settings. If you don't want to delete your storage on termination if you need to attach it to another larger instance in the future. I'm gonna choose a security group. I already have one set for me and that allows me to web in from my home IP addresses. So you choose that and then you can launch your instance. I have already a keypad downloaded, but if you don't, you need to download it now, otherwise you cannot log into the instance to configure them. The instance will take a few moments to launch. You can go grab a coffee. After the instance finishes booting up, you can copy the public IP address and use that to uh, store it somewhere and then you can log in using SSH using the certificate that you download in the beginning and you can start installing the web server then. Let's update the packages first because the new images are not created every single second so there is always something new to install. apt get update and then upgrade will do the job of ensuring your VM is fully patched. After the updates are done, you can install all the requirements to run Nextcloud. So a few PHP modules, uh, the MariaDB client, so you can you know create tables and so on. Uh, wget and unzip, so you can install Nextcloud and NFS common, so you can mount the EFS volumes and access the storage files. Then we install BC Math. GMP in Magic and Image Magic because we know we're going to need that so we have a clean install. Although these are not essential to run next cloud. So this is going to take a while. And once it's done, we can proceed with creating a folder to mount our EFS volume. Copy the mount uh, path from the AWS console and then just uh, issue this, the commands to mount it to the target folder. Just replace the last element of the command with the folder you created for the file storage. Inside that folder, you can create a subfolder for the next cloud data. I would not have it in the root folder just in case you need to repoint this folder somewhere or move the data around. Um, assign it to the www data user, and that's the user where the web server is running. And also, oh, I actually don't need to uh, do ch mod to the subfolders now because I think they already all belong to the but there's nothing inside, right? The folder is blank. Go to the next cloud page and there you can download the server. You can copy the link and download it straight into your EC2 instance. Now we're gonna do a very, very basic PHP configuration. In production, you will want to tweak this better, yes? Yeah? So just use your favorite editor, go to the folder and to the any file and there we are gonna first increase the memory limit 
next cloud will most probably need more so let's make sure PHP is not memory starved and also you don't want people to be download uploading files in very small chunks or unable to upload large files so we will increase the post and upload limits a bit You also want to increase the execution time in case some PHP task takes longer. For example, re-indexing folders may take a while. Then we need to set a time zone. I use etc, utc for all my servers, so the log files are easy to compare. Then we can enable and start Apache. Now we move next cloud to the web server route. Yeah, I'm not gonna mess up too much with this. I'm gonna first just move it to the HTTP route and don't care about it. But if you're running a production setup, you need to be more careful, right? You may be running multiple applications or may require some, you know, we may have some specific system requirements. Yeah, so really be careful and use your brain. Once you move it, you need to change ownership of the folder to the www data for, uh, user, and that's the user used by Apache. If you don't, then it's not going to work. You may also check chmod. I'm okay that other users can read the files, but for you it may be a requirement that only root and Apache can modify these files. So again, your mileage may vary. And of course, it's time to just create a configuration file for Nextcloud. So I go straight to sites available and enter the information about my folder and the application. Then it's time to enable important modules. So we should have come on. A to N uh, site to enable next cloud. Then we do A to N mod rewrite because we are going to rewrite URLs that come. We enable headers because we need to send specific options via headers and then mime and so on. Now, if you try to log into the IP or the URL of your server, you're going to be greeted by the installer. You go back to our text file and check the database username and password. And let's create a username for the administrator and a password as well. Then we can go back and check the folder where we decided to install Nextcloud and that's pointing to Amazon EFS. So I'm just going to copy the path here and that's going to be our data folder. Okay, we scroll down and we're going to populate the database information from our text file. We copy the administrator username and the password from the text file into the installation window. The database name is going to be the one we define during the database creation process. And the database host is going to be the one pointed uh, by AWS. One thing though, you will not want to use the administrator folder in production yet. Yeah? This is just for the sake of the demo, so please be careful. Yeah? We copy the endpoint of the database there and the port. I'm not installing the recommended applications, but you may want to. Click finish and wait for set the setup to complete. And that's it. 
when you see the next cloud welcome window you know that your installation is done we just need to do some adjustments and of course prepare redis Redis is configured in the configuration file of Nextcloud and that is config.php. So first thing is to actually make a backup of the original file. And then we can edit it. The instructions to configure Redis are in the Nextcloud configure, uh, documentation and they work perfectly. Copy the primary endpoint from the Redis configuration page, including port. And take your time to appreciate the final configuration.